Jody, thank you so much for uh, being on my podcast today and breaking up all the monotony of the uh, COVID-19 lockup okay. fest. Yeah, this is great timing. I'm, I'm happy to have a, a different human to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, so am I because, you know, like I, I pretty much talk to like the same three people. Like I talk to my, you know, my wife, my, my friend Bert, my friend James, and then like, you know, you know, the friends I have online. And so I'm like, oh, it's going to be so nice to talk to somebody. Well, so what are you doing to pass the time while hold up because of all this? Like, wh- what are you doing? Well, I mean, to be honest, like I can, there's always work for me to do. Um, not paid work, mind you, but there's work. <laughs> um, Same here. <laughs> I'm forever behind on accounting. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'll start my accounting for the year. But um, I'm trying to get it back into some new artwork because I've, I actually have been in a slump with that for a couple months anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a good, I mean, it's a good opportunity. It's just a. Uh, I'm sure all of us are feeling the, the mental strain. It's been difficult to, to focus, but mm-hmm. I um, I was actually on, speaking of talking to other people, I was on like a big group chat last night with um, a group that meets, a group of artists that meet once a week. And we basically just meet to like have some beers and talk about what we're doing and mm-hmm. you know, hang out and discuss. So we did that online and it was really, it was kind of great just to hear like a bunch of people talking and I could focus and I just like sat there and drew the whole time. And, uh, so that was great. But yeah, so mainly, um, mainly just trying to do, I'd started, you know, a new piece last night. And so when this is all done and I can do markets again, you know, hopefully I'll have some new work. So that'll be something, <laughs> at least, you know, something new to offer people once they're shopping again yes and like especially i mean i can imagine you know because you know obviously for those who don't know you know you are a big part of uh, king diamond's stage show and have been since uh 98 and yeah. uh but you're also an artist obviously so you've been talking about that and uh of course we'll go into the king diamond stuff but i wanted to touch on the art like what you said about how kind of being holed in right now make gives us this time to be creative and it's almost become probably more of a an important outlet for us um than ever before i think you know i'm a songwriter and so like you know i mean i just went crazy i just bought a loop pedal online today because i was like i can't practice with my band so i was like you know what i'm gonna practice with myself that's what i'm doing to kind of keep myself from going crazy so you know are you finding it hard to be motivated to to, to, to yeah. go into well, your art again or is it kind of pushing you a little bit it's been a weird I, I think I mean we're still in the early stages so mm-hmm. I think the first this kind of first like really kind of panic setting in week kind of has been um, it was like well a couple of days I'm just like oh, all I'm doing is listening to the news not getting a, a damn thing done you know but then like I'm like okay I need to like focus and then I was able to just like boom come up with an idea and mm-hmm. and probably have more have the push of like who cares if it's not the right idea i can get stuck on stuff like that sometime like is this how i should be spending my time who cares just do it like <laughs> go for it start it um so that has been kind of good um and i think as as it goes on i mean i'm not gonna have i also do some like graphic design for clients but mm-hmm. um all of my work is basically event based I right. mostly do promotional work for other people's events and since people aren't going to be having events I don't have that work anymore either so it's almost like I don't know if you go through this like with writing music you know um, sometimes it's like a procrastination thing you're like well I could totally write this right now but I gotta do this and that and this and you know oh my god it's like my right. life story it's like I walk yeah. it, I purposely keep my guitar on a stand at all times and like I walk by and I look at it and I go oh, I have to dust and then <laughs> it's so stupid but I, I'm so guilty of it and so like one good thing is I feel like and the thing is once I'm on a roll I'm on a roll and it's totally cool but once I get 
just like exercising, you know, it's like once I stop, I'm like, fuck, fuck them, I'm going to that gym again, you know? <laughs> but so I'm like, all right, like if clients aren't hitting me up and, you know, then it's like I have no excuses. I can't do markets. I got no excuses, you know, just, just keep on making it. So my only fear is like right now my studio is in a different location from my house. So. Um, I can still get to it, mm-hmm. but if if the lot if we turn to like lockdown situation where we can't really leave our house, then that's going to be an issue. So I'm kind of on the fence. Like I'm like, how much do I bring home? You know, like what do I bring home? Do I have enough art supplies? Probably not. You know, like <laughs> uh, that's a little nerve wracking. But I'm gonna I work around it. I just started working on something that's really small because it's super easy to do at home. So I'm like. Maybe it's, I'm just going to do a series of really small drawings, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. So I actually did check out uh, a lot of your artwork, which I've actually been checking out for a little while. And you have such an incredible eye and a style. Like, it's. I noticed you do a lot of kind of like, kind of dark pencil kind of looking. Am I correct on this? Kind of like it's, or not really, it almost looks kind of pencil-y, if that makes sense. And yeah, it's, it's actually, um, it's ink, it's pen and ink. But, okay. You know, same process, slightly different tool, but um, yeah. Well, thank you. That's really nice to say. <laughs> yeah, and, and you definitely have this thing for uh, crows, which I yeah. I don't know what it is about crows. Like, I, I have this thing for crows and ravens. Well, probably because I'm an Edgar Allan Poe fan. Yeah, yeah, you, know? Yeah. you know, it's cool. It's like, I mean, they're so, they're incredible creatures. But for me, the, one of the best things about about drawing them is actually hearing other people's experiences. Because when I, when I do a market, you know, I'm, I have my booth set up and people come in. And if they're drawn to the crows, like, so many times, it's because they have stories, you know, mm-hmm. like, of interactions with crows and their experiences. So it's kind of funny. Like, I've never personally had an interaction with a crow. I, I have lots of other bird interactions, but... Um, not the crow, but other people get to, I get to live vicariously through other people, I guess. They get to tell me all the cool stories. So it's pretty wild to hear all the different things that people have experienced. There's something, something like unique about the bird for some reason like that, you know, because like for me, it, it was, it, it, it's owl. It's an owl, you know, yeah. like that was always my father's favorite bird. Like he just loved it. Of course, my, we always used to joke around and say my dad was pretty much a vampire. Um yeah. You know, he, I mean, but that's what he was into. And like th- that kind of imagery was very common in my household growing up. And so, of course, I have this attachment to anything that has an owl, you know, but it's a specific style, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, I think for like the one thing, I mean, I've always loved animals, like, you know, always. Mm-hmm. Um, but I hate like, cute artwork. You know? <laughs> so do I. That's exactly like I hate it when it's literal. You know? Yeah, like it doesn't. I don't know. I mean, like I, animals are cute in nature; they don't have to be cute like on paper or canvas. So I guess maybe i um, maybe that's just part of the the appeal is just like aesthetically, you know, they're badass. So <laughs> that, that helps. You know, they're definitely like a metal looking bird. Just you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about what they do, that they're like what they're like birds of prey. Do you know what I mean? And it's like they're not supposed to be cute and fluffy. You know, they're supposed to look like they're gonna chew your eye out. You know what I mean? <laughs> just a little bit deadly. <laughs> just a yeah, just a little bit. Like maybe like not even want to kill you. More like just want to like hurt you really bad. You know? So... I will yell at you really meanly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Jody, do you do a lot of press? Like as far as like interviews and stuff go because I was curious about that no not really I mean if I I mean I did a recent like interview and another podcast recently Mm -hmm. um, but not so I mean it's kind of getting to be more Mm -hmm. I generally am like yeah cool if anybody asks like you know I like to talk about stuff (laughs) so (laughs) why not Um, but yeah I mean it's I, I mean, I'm I'm fortunate that I'm in like two kind of different worlds. The music world is definitely more of a. I shouldn't even say that. I, I feel like it's more of a press thing, just because musicians get interviews and press. But now that you know, more and more involved in the art world, you know, artists do as well. So mm-hmm. it's kind of cool that I get people from both. Uh, you know, both avenues kind of hit me up. So that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but when it happens, I'm happy to 
to go for it. See, that's super cool because, like, one of the things I did with, you know, I tried to do with my podcast was, you know, even though I run mostly like a hard rock, rock, metal type blog, is that with the podcast, I, you know, I'm, I've got so many just broad interests in music and people and stuff. And so, like, I just kind of use that as an opportunity to talk to whoever about whatever. And so, whenever, some, you, know, you know, like, someone like you is t- completely fascinating to me because, like you said, you know, there's, there's a, you know, a couple of facets to you. It's not just you know a band it's like you're not even like like it like the musician in the band but you're like this focal point in this like visual it's a weird anomaly (laughs) it's a joke and sometimes it still rings true it's like even with the band it's like all right well i'm not the band i'm not the crew who i'm just jody (laughs) you know like sometimes it's it's hard to know where you fit in you know because like during activities and stuff well the band does this the crew does that and i'm like okay just somebody tell me where to go <laughs> i'm gonna hang on the bus and take a nap you guys go do what you need to do <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but yeah i mean i think it's cool like i mean i like that you are talking to people about different things because you know talking about one thing all the time that's like no fun <laughs> you know? no and especially you know when you're immersed in it for yeah. You know, a large chunk of time, you know, I mean, you know, which is so funny because one of the other things I try to do is I try to do some research so I don't ask the same questions all the time. So, but there's certain questions I want to ask just so people, because some people might be listening for the first time. So I try to stray away from a lot of stock questions, but obviously one I, I wanted to ask you, even though I know I'd like you to tell the people <laughs> is that, you know, how did you actually come to be involved with uh, King Diamond and becoming a part of his roadshow. It was it was all kind of a, a fluke and it was very fast. But I, um, I was just kind of promoting a band back in '98 that was uh, a local band, and they were. Um, I just broke a rubber band on my knees and snapped it into my face. That <laughs> shit hurts. <laughs> and I was like, wham, what the fuck? So, right, <laughs> see, this is this is the kind of podcast we can do stuff like this. You know, it's fine, you know, so. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they were going to be local support when King played um, in Philly. And so I was on, like, message boards just telling people about the show and uh, and I ran across a post that was like, actress needed. And I assumed it had been filled. You know, it was like a week old already. And I just answered because I was like, oh, cool. Like, I'm going to meet these people at the show. This way I have something to say other than just like, hey, man, nice show. You know? Right, <laughs> so, right. I just, just reaching out, make, you know, networking, basically. And um, but I heard back from that. You know, after I emailed, I heard back right away, and um, you know, I got asked a couple more questions, and then um, it was like a friend of King's who had posted it, and then he was like, "All right, well, King's gonna call you in a couple of days," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and then, <laughs> like, oh, shit, like this might actually be happening, you know? So uh, luckily, I mean, at the time, I, you know, I was a kid, I had like I had two part-time jobs; it was no big deal. It'd just be like later. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm going to go live the dream. What the hell? So uh, that was it. Like I within like a within a week, I was I was flying to Dallas and I had no clue what I was doing. I had no clue uh, what my job was going to be, really. Um, but luckily, luckily, you know, um, once I got on the stage, I just won it and uh, it worked out. <laughs> so I did read somewhere where you were not really a King Diamond fan <laughs> before the before the gig and that somebody you can correct me if I'm wrong because I hope this is not all just hearsay but like and I also heard that uh, someone basically played you uh, Welcome Home so that you would at least be familiar with a song before you went in is that true? He gave me a tape and he was like just just at least listen to this song I was like okay <laughs> like I just needed something you know but yeah I, I wasn't oh, only I was not a fan only because people who like imitate King's voice sound terrible. Oh, it's like, the worst. Man. You know, they would just be like, no, and I'm like, oh my god, like what is that noise coming out of your face? This is not something I want to hear. You know, so like I didn't listen to it just because the the advertising 
was not was not enticing. <laughs> I'm in tears over here. Like, what is that coming out of your face? <laughs> like, just, but like, it's so funny because as you're saying this, as you're saying this, I can totally hear myself going, you know, grandma, welcome home. <laughs> Like, uh, like if I was saying that to somebody, I could be like, they'd be like, that's fucking terrible, dude. You'd be like, what is that? No. Yeah. No. No, I am not obviously. listening to that. My, my, my appreciation uh, grew very quickly. Actually hearing the musicians and the vocalists for real made a huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Where you're just like, oh, wow. Okay. So this is what it sounds like. Okay. This is good. <laughs> Actually, I would always giggle, and and I mean for like years, and probably still do, like in rehearsals, because like, I mean, because it is such like an emotional, you know, like King's vocals are so um, expressive, you know. I mean, those those pitches are not something you just kind of do humming around the house, you no. know. But it's like, like so over the top, but like yeah. in, in, in all like respect of that, like to me, that's my favorite thing to say is like when something is just over the top. That means like yeah. it's just at this level that not everybody yeah, can get awesome. to. I mean, it's balls out. So, like, there's nothing <laughs> chill about it. So, like, no. when we're in rehearsals, it, it still makes me giggle because it's like, okay. And then it's, bam, you know, 110%, you know? Because I'm like, it just seems like a relaxed environment. And then this, like, you know, he just belts out. And it's like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, that's it's awesome. But it still makes me giggle. <laughs> like, I still look at him and go, I can't believe that's actually a human voice. Like, that is just crazy to me. <laughs> You know? It was pretty bonkers. Pretty amazing. <laughs> well, so you've had, you've been doing this since '98. So, like back then, did you look at this and go, "This is going to be a career"? Like, did you realize that that was going to be pretty much your life moving forward? No idea. I mean, no. I just was like, touring sounds fun. <laughs> you know, like, this sounds fun. You know. And then, that, you know, that first tour, I remember the, the guys in the band were like, oh, he's going to take you to Europe, I'm sure. Like, you know, they were really happy with what I was doing. And mm -hmm. um, so I was like, well, shit. Like, then all of a sudden it just became like a chance to travel and see things that, you know, I would I never thought I would see. So that's all I, I, I mean, you know, these things, life happens. You don't really like know what you're doing most of the time at least i don't <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so i just kind of go with the flow it wasn't i mean it took a really long time i think for me to really feel like oh like this is that i wasn't just like a i mean i don't know it's hard to say like like that i'm officially part of it I, that sounds kind of silly to say out loud but Oh, I don't, I don't yeah. think so. I mean, because it's funny because, you know, I've seen King Diamond live three times now and uh, all three times, obviously you were in the group and it's almost like if you weren't there, I would feel like part of the band was missing, you know, because it's, it's such an, you play this really centralized, like integral part of the show. It, it It's what adds to that visual aspect that kind of steers you away from just looking at a bunch of dudes playing instruments. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because all of a sudden it's kind yeah, of like... totally. And I mean, that makes me so happy to hear. Like, um, I mean, sincerely, that's really awesome. Um, I I feel like I've, I've gotten a lot more feedback like that in the last mm -hmm. couple of years. And it's so... It's really heartwarming, to be honest. Like, I... I think a, a lot of the part of it is, I guess I should say, backing up to that, like, um, is I, to me, this job, like, performing for for King is, like, it's so natural to me mm -hmm. that, like, it just feels like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So, like, whereas other jobs, I'm like, fuck, I gotta go to work, I gotta go do this <laughs> shit, you know? <laughs> and uh, so it doesn't feel like, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, um, a whole other topic is like the things that you sacrifice in, or, in order to be able to do the things that you love. But oh, absolutely! But the actual that actual like performance of it is it's just like I'm like man, I, I can't even believe I get to do this. So it's so awesome. So when people appreciate it, and then to go as far as say things like that to say like, oh no, you're totally part of the band. Like you wouldn't be the same without you. And um, it's really it really warms my heart it's really awesome and i'm so happy that people get that i'm i'm adding to that experience you know i'm happy that i'm happy that what i'm doing is not only fulfilling me but it's also fulfilling other people that's like that's like the best compliment i mean well of course i mean you earn that but 
like I'd be pissed if I was at a King Diamond show and Grandma wasn't on the stage. I'd be like, "What the fuck, man!" Like, you know, <laughs> I want at least a third of my money back here. You know, <laughs> like. I mean, it's so speaking of like you, you pretty much play the. I mean, you not even pretty much. You do play the, like the most beloved character in the King Diamond saga, which is Grandma. Like, how how t- fucking tired do you get? Uh, like whenever someone says, "Let me help you out of the chair." <laughs> it's, I roll my eyes a lot, but it's so cool though. Like playing that role, I still am like laughing under that mask every night. So it's still it's it, it hasn't gotten old, which is. Which is great, you know. I mean, it must be like fucking like almost somewhat borderline hysterical to hear like you know you know like thousands of people yelling, "Let me help you out of the chair." (laughs) It is kind of funny, like when you just break it down to that. Like people are singing about some grandma. What the hell, you know? (laughs) I remember having that album at home, and my dad hearing that song. My dad was like. Why is that guy crying about his grandma? Like, who who is this? You know? <laughs> so many things we love are like completely ridiculous when you just take them out of context and write them on paper or something. <laughs> you know, I mean, it so, totally is. It's like like even if you wrote down the concept behind the album, you're just like, really? Okay, that's yeah. weird. But then like you hear it and you're just like, oh my god, I can't, yeah. grandma, welcome. Home. Yeah. Yeah. It takes all the ingredients, right, to make it. Just right. <laughs> it totally does. Well, so you are constantly surrounded by metal, I mean, heavy music, like just constantly, especially when you're on tour. Like, what is some of your favorite non metal music, you know, musicians or artists or whatever? So, this, um, it's actually, I think I will say it kind of coordinates with working from home i have a hard time listening to um stuff that with vocals Mm -hmm. when i'm working so i tend to try to it sucks because like i'll put on like spotify and just like shit will just all blend together and um Mm -hmm. so it's like that but that also got me into like more i don't know just like slower doomy stuff but um man that's tough. Like, um, I'm always looking for music recommendations. Play some mommy, Don. But um, <laughs> I've been actually on a thrash kick because I was like cleaning and stuff. So, so uh, I'm trying to even think. Like, who? Like, like I love Yob. Like, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we toured. Uh, Uncle Acid supported us on a last tour, and and they're awesome. I was listening to them before. You know, before we toured together. So that was a that was a treat. Um, stuff along those kind of veins a little bit more uh slower kind of stuff and that's kind of what i've been into for a while Mm -hmm. it varies um i think my the last like album that i was like oh this is so good and it was totally i I don't want to say totally not metal because it was awesome but um henry Derek ellis um he put out an album like last last year fucking so good like so good i can't think of the name of it now and who was it again who was it again um henry derrick ellis henry derrick ellis i gotta check that out i I, i'm like i'm like you i'm always especially now in this time where you know i'm pretty much trapped in my basement you know while my wife works upstairs i'm going i need stuff to listen to (laughs) you know it's funny too like i noticed i mean i like to go see metal more than anything like live that's number one but then when i'm at home or whatever just kind of i like some more um i don't know sort of more i don't want to totally say ambient but like it depends what i'm doing you know like um like my favorite my favorite band to like paint to or something is still acid bath it like never gets old even though there's like barely (laughs) you know it was a short-lived career for that band but right um, but it's so visual and like so it just, I don't know, I find it really inspiring, so. That's so funny that you said that because I totally feel the same way. Is that, you know, uh, metal bands are always my my go-to. You know, I'm also like a big deadhead. So, I like, I love going to see, you know, like the Dead & Company band and things like that, you know, because, I, you know, I love it musically and that it's really different. But, you know, for the, you know, and I get, I get a certain joy out of that, you know, on its own right. But, you know. Going to There's see like metal for different genres. I feel like. kind of. uh, wait. What'd you say again? I'm sorry. It's almost like 
almost like a time and place thing like if different activities inspire me to listen to different types of music that's exactly what it is and then it's also like at least for me sometimes it's like a mindset too you know it's like sometimes like i'm like you said like i'm just in this mood to kind of clean or like you know be around the house and then all of a sudden i'm you know listening to municipal waste and king diamond and holy grail and whatever you know and then there's times where i I listen to a lot of psych rock and a lot of you know you know psych and occult rock my favorite being jess and the ancient ones who actually was on the road with you guys yeah yeah, they're they're rad too. Like, yeah, that's kind of I've been more in sort of that vibe for like kind of a while, but you know, it, it varies. You know, I'm trying to think like what else. I mean, I go through phases. Like, um, I was listening to a lot of Royal Thunder for a while, more like rock stuff. You know, right, right. Um, so it, it just varies. I go through. Like I said, yeah, it's kind of phases. Well, so what is the most unmetal thing about you? Ooh. <laughs> that um i don't know a lot like i'm part hippie really like i got um, that by the way i could kind of sense that just you know yeah it's i was i was a hippie before i was a metalhead that is but awesome. it's still in there i just like kept it down down real deep for a long time <laughs> <laughs> what did you like follow fish around or something like <laughs> no, no 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 not that bad no, i got out early earlier than they well i shouldn't say that they were around but not um no i didn't go that far <laughs> you know what it was is when i was like in high school you know i'm like smoking weed and listening to led zeppelin and it was awesome and then like i drank a beer and then like and listen to Iron Maiden and I was like wait a second <laughs> this is what this is what I'm supposed to be doing you know? <laughs> You're like game changer here you know <laughs> totally yeah but I mean but yeah deep down I don't know the least on metal thing that's that's a hard I don't know I feel like it would probably be like my um my flannel pajamas or something like that <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm the laziest dresser ever like I you know, I don't put on the metal uniform mostly to go out every once in a while. All right. And I'm just like, oh, whatever. These jeans are close by. I'll throw them on. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, you know, these don't smell bad. You know, my <laughs> wife. Uh, I can't tell you how many times my wife is like, how many times have you worn those jeans? And I'm like, well, I don't know. She's like, okay, it's time to wash them. I'm like, really? <laughs> You got somebody to keep you in check, man, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm t- I'm a typical guy. Like even at like 46, I'm just like, you know, like. Uh, like I have to be told, you know, go shower and stuff. Like that's terrible. But you know, I mean, what would? Well, we're would... also like working from home and stuff, so it's a different. We don't have to like do the whole go into your work and being around humans all day long. It's you definitely, you definitely uh, use a little bit less. Um, or I don't know. You just get lazier. Concern <laughs> for your overall appearance. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I was telling you know, my wife gets up every morning, you know, she goes to, goes into work, you know, and she does her thing. And like, you know, I get up in the morning and I'm, you know, yeah, even I, you know, I work from home and I'm like, maybe I'll put jeans on today. I don't know. Like, do I have to go anywhere? I don't think. No, I'm going to leave the sweatpants on. <laughs> I, I mean, I have a dog now, so I have to leave the house every day, you know, <laughs> but uh, so I have to and I refuse to go out in sweatpants and stuff. So like I do put on pants three times a day at least to go out the dog. Like, <laughs> before that like the winter and I, I hate winter so much so like the winter before I got her uh-huh. there would be days where I did not go out of the house like you know and I think I was like living alone too like it didn't even matter I was just like I, I seriously thought like I'm like alright I'm ready to get a dog but that means you gotta go outside every day <laughs> that, are you gonna be able to handle it Jody <laughs> uh- <laughs> I ultimately decided it was probably good for me and I should have got a, lo- a dog a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like the same thing with me. It's like, yeah, I, I can't, th- there's also numerous times where, you know, like my wife has come home from work or something and she said, okay, you know, we need to go split. I'm okay. And she's like, you can't leave the house looking like that. And I'm like, oh, and I look down and I've got like the, the sweatpants on and the fucking like t-shirt with the hole in the armpit. And I'm like, oh yeah, I probably should change. You know? my, thing, my thing is toothpaste. Every fucking day of my life, there is toothpaste on my right boob. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, such a, that's such a weird like coincidence every day <laughs> I, well, honestly i think it's because of my electric toothbrush because when i'm if i'm on the road and i just have a regular toothbrush i'm all right but it's something about that toothbrush but yeah every day and so i'll be out and about and then like all of a sudden i'll just like look at myself and i'm covered in pet hair and i got toothpaste boob and i'm like <laughs> Joe, like boob. who let you out of the house like look in the mirror once in a while it's like <laughs> it's, it could be bad so, oh my god sees me on the street don't don't hold it against me <laughs> toothpaste boob just may be the next band name like that was that's great you know like i could totally see that <laughs> but okay so i only have a few more questions and you know, these are just generally kind of like loose questions i like to ask people just because it's you know fun for me to know but like if you could have dinner with any musician or artist alive or dead who would it be bruce dickinson <laughs> I love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. I want to go bowling with him because one time I um, I was in a band for a few years and I, I sang and when we put out a demo, one of the reviews said her and Dickinson should go bowling. And I was like, fuck, yes, that would be the coolest thing in the world to do is go, is go bowling with Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> Have you ever met Bruce? No, not yet. Ugh. I love that you said not yet. That's the yeah, best. It's That's happen, the best. For sure. My ultimate touring dream would be for for King Diamond to support Iron Maiden. So I'm uh, I'm putting that in the universe. I actually have some friends who work uh, on the Maiden crew, and so um, you know, I just keep telling them. I'm like, just keep saying it. Like when he's around, <laughs> you know, maybe it'll sink into his subconscious, and like you know, next thing you know. Well, well, <laughs> well, of course, like my question is like, why hasn't this tour already happened? You know, <laughs> no, because it'd be so awesome. It would end all the awesomeness forever. No, <laughs> oh, like, I mean, like, you know, I don't know if you saw this, but there was like a big thing in the, um, you know, on the net that was kind of spreading. It was, it was like blabbermouth, brave words and sites like that, that basically someone had talked to Rob Halford and said, why hasn't Judas Priest and Iron Maiden tour together? Like this needs to happen, like yeah, right. now, you know. And I was just, all I could think of was like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, King Diamond. Like that would just oh my God. It, God. it'd be it would be like dividing by zero. It would just like open up a Jeez. vortex. <laughs> Jeez, that's like that's ridiculous. That's like the ultimate ever. That's pretty amazing. I mean, like the music alone would just like cause you to just like implode. Like not even explode. Like you would just like turn into mush <laughs> that would be that'd be it we could all go home after that <laughs> <laughs> it would ruin it for a lot of other bands because i'm just like i mean like how, how much would that suck for other bands if that bill happened and you're just like wow everything's just gonna be a downer from this point you know <laughs> well so in your opinion what is an album that you feel like I don't know. Like, what's an album that you feel like everyone should own and listen to? Ooh. Well, uh, that's almost like asking, like, what your favorite album is. Um, I, I mean, not really. It's actually more a depth question, but... Oh, it's something every... Okay, well, I mean, I feel like... Huh. Hmm... I mean, I feel like it's more for me. Oh God, man, you got me. I feel like um, there are certain bands that everybody needs to listen to, like mm -hmm. the, the obvious, like Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. Right. Um, and like, what really? It's hard to. I mean, for me, like the two albums that changed my life were. It, and for me, it's always the first thing I hear from a band. So Led Zeppelin Four made me appreciate music like like I felt like I woke up as soon as I heard that album I was like holy shit like this is what music is all about wow yeah and then when I heard um, so Number of the Beasts was the first Maiden album that I listened to and that was like that was whole, mine that was like my life now <laughs> you know like that it was just I mean anything that, that is that like inspiration or transformative you know anything that makes you feel like your life just changed when you heard it is is uh listen to that shit <laughs> oh my god i you know I, it's funny that you said that because 
the first Led Zeppelin album I ever owned was Led Zeppelin 4 and then yeah. Iron you know Number of the Beast was the album that pretty much changed my life you know yeah. like I mean Twisted Sister Stay Hungry was like my gateway yeah. but it was like when I heard Number of the Beast I was just like I want more of that I gotta have more <laughs> you know like it just opened the floodgates for me yeah it's I mean it's hard to like what sucks is that and I think this is just like perspective you know it's like now I'm like god is there anything like now that I would suggest with that but it's like you know we've already listened to like so much music you know that it's hard to have that transformative moment Mm -hmm. now you can still be super impressed by an album but I don't think it's gonna like anything is going to like change my life at this point you know that's so funny because i've had this conversation numerous times with especially people my age where we were like this generation doesn't have you know like we don't have the, the we don't have the next iron maiden or the next like judas priest or the next black sabbath i mean it's like we can have bands that come close but i sometimes wonder at least on in my perspective it's because if it's because those bands kind of set the wheel in motion, even now, everything that comes out, you know, I mean, I mean, like, there's a reason why, like, you know, Rival Sons is never going to be as big as yeah, Led Zeppelin, yeah. you know, because they're pretty much doing Zeppelin. They're doing it very well, but they're not breaking new ground. Well, it's like just I mean, it's just like, you know, teenagers now are going through the same thing that that we did where. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like Led Zeppelin was putting out albums when I was, you know, a teenager. Like, yeah, we yeah. were discovering old music because it ruled, you know? And, like, teenagers still do that. Like, they're still being blown away by some of the same bands that we were blown away by. Just their, like, the mid-range of music is, you know, different. But the old, you know, the older bands that, like you said, like, paved the way, like, they're still going to be there. You know, they're, mm-hmm. they're hold, the pillars holding everything else up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's funny because another question that I get asked you know, or that I touch on sometimes when I'm talking to friends or whatever is that we talk about, you know, like what's going to happen to metal music when bands like Priest and Maiden and it, you know, all of them are you know, accept and whatnot are, aren't making music anymore. And I always kind of remind people is like, you know, you got to remember that, that these bands, even though they're iconic they were not commercially famous bands. They didn't have hit songs on the radio. So even though we might not get the stage shows and the huge level of performances like that, like the style of music is always, at least for me, from what I can hear from newer bands coming out, is going to thrive. Yeah, I mean, there's still going to be like, there's still going to be people in their garage with like minimum equipment that just want to be cool and like, you know, and they're going to discover, you know, discover music for the feel of it and, and be driven by that feeling. So at least I hope. I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> I can't imagine that that would just go away. I mean, different phases will come. Different things will be popular for a while. And a lot of them are going to suck because a lot of them already suck. But, you know, <laughs> but then there's a lot of good still, you know. I mean, there's probably, like, I have this discussion with, like, professional musicians all the time. There's probably amazing little bands out there that we're never going to hear because you know they're just you know playing in the basement or something Mm -hmm. but um you know they're still out there and and sooner or later some will come to (laughs) come to the surface and you know oh i totally agree like i like to i like to think to myself sometimes too that some of the greatest music out there is the music that we've never heard or that you know that we may not hear but with the influx of new bands coming out and so much music being made these days, even though it might be a little bit of oversaturation, I feel like that it's still kind of a glimpse of hope, if that makes sense, yeah. knowing that, yeah. you know, especially young people, you know, you know, bands like, you know, I mean, you know, like Holy Grail and bands like, um, I don't know, Enforcer and Striker and bands like that who are playing this kind of metal music that I grew up on before they were even born, you know, kind of lets me go, yeah. oh, so this stuff still has some relevance to it, even to younger people. Totally, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of a blessing and a curse, too, like you said, the influx. I mean, we are we are so, um, we have so many avenues to hear new music now. It's amazing, but it's also, like, overwhelming. Um, 
you know, like when you're asking about bands, I'm like, I'm like, man, like, I'm so guilty of like, like I said earlier, just like putting on Spotify and like never even really hearing stuff, you know, it's like going, but it's like kind of background. And, um, I do miss the days when you had to like go buy an album and you, then you sat down with it and you, you know, read all the liner notes and read the lyrics and listened to it over and over. And, um, I sat down the other day and, and did that cause, uh, you know, I'm trying to like, I'm like, you know what, take this time to like listen to an album every day and like actually listen to it, you know? And, um, hopefully that's one of the things that'll come out of this is other people will do that too. We'll absorb some of the, what we're exposed to instead of just like having it floating around. I always thought that was so interesting because I love how you said that. Is it, you know, I feel like we come from this generation where, you know, we used to buy records. Like, the, like you really, that was your only, me- you know, you had records and cassettes and cassettes were like such a horrible medium of music, because, <laughs> you know, but like, you know, you could get two cassettes for the price of an album. So sometimes you had cassettes, sometimes you had records, but like you, you, you that was the only way we really knew how to listen to music so I remember that like it was nothing to just listen to an album whereas like now in my 40s I'm like okay if I'm gonna sit down and listen to this you know Iron Maiden Live After Death album that I bought when I was you know 12 whatever <laughs> like it's four sides I've got to flip them over four times <laughs> and change a record like oh my god you know and I'm, but, I, but it's I feel like we've kind of migrated into that whole this whole new way of listening to music because like you said like if I want to listen to Live After Death on record I've got to sit down in my chair in my basement and listen to it yeah, you yeah. know and like really dedicate to yeah. it which is uh, which is awesome that's how it should be done at least till you like really absorb it and then I mean that might be not, that album might not be a good example I'm sure you've absorbed it plenty but uh for, definitely for at least discovering new music. I, I also tend to like, I like to go to a lot of shows, so um, I discover new music that way. And then it has more of an impact. I don't know. And then I'll like buy something, because touring bands, you know, they need you to buy, mm-hmm. buy their shit. And I, I like to <clears throat> support them that way. Um, so that's a little bit different, because then I, it's almost like the first time I, I listen to it, it's more of an experience than just like, you know, then I'll I'll pay more attention to that band because I've seen them and experienced it instead of just like it. You know, sometimes I'll be like, wait, didn't I put on you know this band and I think some other band is playing now. Like I don't even notice how <laughs> it changes. I'm like, well, I haven't. Well, pay attention. <laughs> oh, that, that that happens to me on like like you kind of like you said with Spotify. It was Spotify. Spotify is like I'll be <laughs> Spotify. That's like the '70s one, you know. But um, <laughs> it's like the Superfly one, but. Like, I'll be listening to an album, and then all of a sudden I'll go, who is this? You know? And I'm yeah. like, and, and I'll click on it, and I'll be like, I was just listening, you know, to Jess and the Ancient Ones. Why is it on Behemoth now? I have no idea who this yeah. is. You know what I mean? I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> well, so, for my last question, obviously, like, uh, I wanted to ask you, so do you have any advice out there for people on how to keep themselves occupied during this whole COVID-19 thing. Oh, I mean, I definitely think like there's so many projects that all of us are like, oh, if I only had time, if I only had time. Well, you got time now, motherfuckers. Just do, do that <laughs> shit. So, like, I mean, one of the first things I did was like clean my kitchen, like deep clean. And, you know, being self-employed, I work around the clock now. It's, it's it just, you know, and everything else kind of goes by the wayside. And I was like, wow. You know, you know, I should, I should <laughs> just, just dumb stuff like that. Like, but to me, it was great because, like, you know, I put on some thrash and I just like got loud and cleaned the crap out of my kitchen and cool. And you know, now, like I said, just started a new piece. And if you're, so many people say they're not artistic, but if you're not artistic, uh, there's, I'm sure there's still projects like you want to move your bedroom around, or you want to clean out your closet, or you want to like cut up some t-shirts, or you know, whatever your thing is, like. Just do it, but um, you know. But talk to people too. Like I'm, I think it's great to check in. You know, we all are, have people we're concerned about, so check in and don't like um, or take a freaking walk outside. Like walking my dog has become. I mean, it's. I'm so glad that. I mean, I mean I'd like to think maybe I'll go outside if I didn't have her, but it's definitely like I have to. So I'm like, let me make the most of these walks and. Uh, 
and just yeah like but i will say that like i said the um the thing i did last night which was like you know like a dozen people in this like zoom video chat thing was fun because it was like just people talking about their regular stuff as if nothing was going on just because that's what you do when you talk to your friends so definitely get some of that in because you know that'll help you from going crazy <laughs> i'll tell you what jody you and i will have to have a virtual beer at some point yeah you know? definitely virtual beers we should all be drinking virtual beers <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, well, Jody, thank you so much for taking the time out of your um, your your busy uh, COVID nineteen schedule and talking to me today. This was really fun. I really enjoyed getting to know I'm more glad, about you. I'm, I'm glad you hit me up. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure, Don. You're you're a funny guy. <laughs> oh well, thank you. Well, you know, I think the jury's still out on that one, but I appreciate you saying that. So. <laughs> Well, thanks again, Jody, and uh, you know, good luck with everything, and uh, stay well. You too.